I come home from work, sink into my beloved blue armchair and try to empty a bottle of wine. Make it, it, making it my achievement of the day. I love my job and I have great colleagues. And yet, after work, all I want to do is to escape into the comfort of my armchair, drown all my sorrows in wine, and escape from all thoughts of my boss from hell. He's a very strong personality and an excellent entrepreneur with great ideas and a nose for markets and customers. His dominance allows him to push people and to drive business. But other than that, he's no fun to work with. No matter how hard I try, I can never get it right with him. Another quiet night, month later, again sitting in my blue armchair, lightning strikes, the missing piece, the antidote to all my misery is kindness. In that moment, I decide to quit the company and to make kind leadership the cornerstone of my professional life. Helping leaders to become kind leaders is my endeavor from that moment on. My story is unfortunately not an exemption, but an example. A Gallup study of more than 1 million US workers concluded in 2015 that the number one reason people, people leave their jobs is a bad boss. Gallup presumes people leave managers, not companies. And there's more. Having a high turnover rates is not just a fancy way of saying we're really good at throwing farewell parties. The cost of replacing an employee can be devastating. According to the Society for Human Resource Management, it can cost two times their annual salary. In today's applicant-driven markets, we can't afford bosses from hell any longer. Everybody knows a boss from hell, right? I just hope it's not the person sitting next to you. But what exactly makes them so bad? Is it their lack of skill or is it their personality? In my experience, bosses from hell are universally described as pushy, rude and selfish. There is even a scientific term for them. Asshole. <laughs> Some of you may believe that this is a thing of the past. The days of leaders acting out of control should be long gone. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Some people still think that being and acting rude is part of being a leader. I hope you have also met a really good leader. Someone who has made a positive impact, who has impressed you with their humanity, their empathy, and their ability to build strong and positive relationships. Do you notice the smile that this brings to your face? Then you are able to recall how these leaders bring out the best in people because they don't put themselves above others. And this is exactly the difference between bad leaders and good leaders. Bad leaders rule with intimidation and fear, while good leaders inspire with their optimism and their genuine sense of caring. They are just kind leaders. In my research, I found out that actually all modern leadership concepts contain kind leadership. 
whether it is transformational leadership, empathetic leadership, or servant leadership, the common thread is kindness. To be clear, there will be critical times where you have to make tough decisions. You may even have to let go of people that you <coughs> that will value personally. But you can still do this with appreciation and decency. You don't have to turn into a bully or an ass paragus. <laughs> you may still think that success is only possible with a rude leadership style as seen in Elon Musk. But what has worked well so far at Tesla seems to be disastrous at X, formerly known as Twitter, and perhaps soon to be known as Gone. His intense scrutiny is sometimes likened to the eye of Sauron from the Lord of the Rings. The level of pressure he extrudes is so high that even experienced executives hesitate to challenge him. No doubt, Elon Musk has initiated groundbreaking innovations. But is this only possible with such an unkind approach? No. Meet Sadia Nadella, CEO of Microsoft. A charismatic figure with a calm demeanor. During his tenure, starting in 2014, he has led Microsoft's successful turnaround to cloud services. And an incredible uh, stock price appreciation. A portfolio of $1,000 in 2014 would have a value of $10,000 as of now. I did the math. That's a lot. But what is truly remarkable, remarkable about him is what came before. Satya's transformation to a leader of empathy and kindness. Satya and his wife Anu are parents to three children. Zane, their first son, was born with cerebral palsy a neurological disorder. The severity of his conditions require constant care and support, even for basic daily activities. It was Anu's constant and crucial question, what can we do to help our child, that struck Satya deeply. It led him to pivot from an analytical mindset to one deeply rooted in empathy. It made him recognize the significance of stepping into another person's shoes to not just understand, but to truly, truly feel their sorrows, needs, and aspirations. And this also affected his professional role. Under his leadership, Microsoft has transformed from a notoriously cutthroat culture into one where collaboration empathy and kindness is in the foreground. Today we know that empathetic and kind leadership should be the norm, not the exception. And uh, there is a lot of science that proves that. Gallup's 30 years of studies back this up by showing a clear connection between employee well-being engagement, and performance. And the beauty of it all, kindness is not an inherent trait. It can be learned and honed, as highlighted by Harvard professor Boris Groisberg in his article, Good Leadership is an Act of Kindness. As a leader, now you might ask, but how do I learn kindness? After years in developing leadership programs, 
My answer is clear. Lead yourself first. Raise your self-awareness. Be kind to yourself to be kind to others. Understand that leadership is no longer just deciding and acting, but enabling and facilitating. But what can you do to learn kindness? Perhaps you're already this kind of person, or should I say, kind person. If not, here are just three ideas. Be grateful like an elephant. Elephant rem <coughs> remember favor and aids forever. Like them, recognize the hard work of your team members. Appreciate their contribution. For me, it's still work in progress for because I have missed more birthdays than I'd like to admit. Be empathetic and patient like a llama. Llamas have a calming presence and are even used in therapeutics. Like them, see and feel the world from the other's viewpoints. But please, without the spitting, Be supportive, like a penguin. Penguins huddle together in extremely cold temperatures to conserve the heat and to protect others. Like them, lead as a service to support your team members. Build personal bonds. This is ultimately an act of true kindness and your superpower as a leader in critical times. Again, kind leadership is neither weak nor passive. It's about compassion, empathy, and support for your team members while still making tough decisions. Taking the easy way out is not leadership. That's just selfish and cowardly. You don't have to turn into a kind leader but without it, you will never reach your full potential or that of your team. To that is not easy, but it's like dieting. You will mess up. Have done it or two, but staying on track will finally yield results. Let me invite you to a little experiment. Close your eyes, if you like. Imagine you're at the end of your career, perhaps nestled into your own blue, blue armchair. As you sit there, what do you want to be remembered for? Markets met or lives changed. Think of one person in your team, someone who looks up to you. What legacy will you leave them? Now open your eyes and your ears. Leadership is not about power, it's about empowering making a lasting impact, not just in terms of figures and graphs, but in terms of lives and hearts. So when you step into your office tomorrow, decide, will you just be another boss or will you be a beacon of kindness, changing one life at a time? Choice is yours.